In this lesson, we are talking about the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis. If you want more information on osteoarthritis, including the pathophysiology and risk factors for getting osteoarthritis, please check out my full lesson on this topic. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk briefly about what osteoarthritis is. Osteoarthritis is a non-inflammatory arthritis. So we're going to talk about what I mean by non-inflammatory arthritis later on when we talk about the symptoms of osteoarthritis. But what I want you to take away is that it is a non-inflammatory arthritis compared to an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. And it can be polyarticular or monoarticular. So poly meaning many, articular referring to joints. So many joints can be affected in osteoarthritis or it can be monoarticular, mono meaning one. So one or many joints can be affected in osteoarthritis. And we're gonna talk about the joints that are more commonly affected in the next slide. And unlike other types of arthritis, osteoarthritis is most commonly going to be due to wear and tear. So as a patient utilizes their joints repeatedly over the course of their life, the joints become weakened and damaged, leading to osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is actually going to be the most common type of arthritis. It accounts for three quarters of all cases of arthritis. And the prevalence of this condition increases with increasing age. You can imagine that as you get older and older, you've used your joints more and more. So you've used your joints more frequently and repeatedly for longer periods of time as you get older. So the prevalence of this condition increases with increasing age. And just for an example as to how common osteoarthritis is, it is estimated that the distal interphalangeal joint, the DIP joint, the last knuckle joint in your finger is affected in approximately 60% of individuals over the age of 60 years old. So it is a very, very common condition. Now let's talk about the joints that are affected in osteoarthritis. So the joints that are affected in osteoarthritis are the following. And it's important to note that affected joints are oftentimes going to be asymmetric, meaning that if one joint in one hand is affected, it doesn't necessarily mean that the joint in the other hand is affected, as opposed to other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, where we see a symmetric distribution. So if you were to have one of your joints in your hand affected on one side, you're oftentimes going to have the same joint affected on the other side. But in osteoarthritis, this isn't the case. It's oftentimes going to be asymmetric. But there is an exception here. And that comes with the knees. Now, the knees are actually going to be the most common joint that is affected in osteoarthritis, and these are oftentimes going to be affected bilaterally. So because throughout your life, you use your knee joints for standing and walking and running and other activities, so they are weight-bearing joints, they are the most commonly affected joints in osteoarthritis. And as we mentioned here, they can be affected bilaterally. So both knees can be affected at the same time. And then some other common joints that can be affected include the joints in the hand. Now we talked about the distal interphalangeal joint or the DIP joint being affected in a large number of patients, especially as those patients get older. But we can also see it in the PIP joints or the proximal interphalangeal joints, which are the joints here. And it's important to note that the MCP joint, the metacarpal phalangeal joints, are often not affected. Now, there are some exceptions to this. There are some conditions that can lead to these MCP joints being affected, but most cases are going to have the DIP joints and the PIP IP joints being affected and the MCP joints not being affected. Now let's get into the more specific details as to the signs and symptoms in osteoarthritis. Now before we actually talk about signs and symptoms, it's important to make note of the fact that patients may be asymptomatic. They may not have any signs and symptoms, but they may have joint changes that are indicative of osteoarthritis. So a patient may have joint deterioration without experiencing any overt symptoms. So I do want to mention that here before we actually talk about the signs and symptoms. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis? Well, because it is osteoarthritis, we're going to have symptoms of arthritis. Arth meaning joint and itis meaning inflammation. So we're going to have joint pain. And this joint pain is going to be a dull, achy, or throbbing pain. It can often be described as a deep pain within the joint. And what's important about this joint pain is that the pain gets worse with use, with activity. So as you use the affected joint throughout the day, the pain gets worse. And this pain gets relieved with rest. And this is going to differ from arthritis pain in inflammatory arthritis conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. We're going to talk about that in the next slide. 
And another finding that can be noted with this pain is that if you were to actually touch the joint, there can be tenderness at the joint line. Now this joint pain is going to be non-inflammatory in nature. What does non-inflammatory mean? We mentioned that osteoarthritis is a non-inflammatory arthritis, but what does non-inflammatory mean in this circumstance? So what this means is that although there may be some mild inflammation present, it is not an inflammatory arthritis like we would see with rheumatoid arthritis, meaning that the pain worsens with movement and improves with rest. This is different from inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis where the pain worsens with rest and improves with activity or improves with movement. So there is an opposite finding with the pain in non-inflammatory arthritis. And patients can experience morning stiffness. So the joint can be stiff in the morning, but the stiffness is going to last less than 30 minutes as opposed to inflammatory arthritis where the morning stiffness is going to be greater than one hour. So this is another key finding in determining that this is a non-inflammatory arthritis. And then another very important key finding with non-inflammatory arthritis is that there is no pain at night. So if you were to see pain that worsens with rest and improves with movement, if you were to see morning stiffness greater than one hour, and you were to see pain at night, the patient experiences pain or joint pain at night, this is more indicative of an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. So these are very important to make note of that these will be found in the pain and the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis. And then one other finding with non-inflammatory arthritis is that there's oftentimes going to be no effusions, no fluid within the joint, although in some cases there may be, but most often there's not going to be any fluid within the joint as opposed to what we would see in inflammatory cases. So that is what non-inflammatory arthritis means. Although the term arthritis means inflammation of the joint, it is considered a non-inflammatory arthritis when we see these types of findings as opposed to an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. Now let's talk about the hands. Since the hands are so commonly affected in osteoarthritis, it's important to look at particular findings in patients' hands. So we talked about the joints before that are most often affected in osteoarthritis, including the DIP joints or the distal interphalangeal joints, the PIP joints or the proximal interphalangeal joints. And we mentioned that the MCP joints or the metacarpal phalangeal joints are not affected in osteoarthritis. So because of this, because of these particular joints that are affected, there are particular findings that can be found in patients with osteoarthritis of the hands. These include what are called Heberden's nodes. So Heberden's nodes are an enlargement of the DIP joints and Bouchard's nodes, which are an enlargement of the PIP joints. And then the carpal metacarpal joint can also have some changes as well, and there can be squaring of the thumbs. So if we were to actually look more closely at what these changes to the hands can look like, these would be what Heberden's nodes look like. So again, this is where the DIP joints of the hands are affected. And then here are Bouchard's nodes. Bouchard's nodes would be an enlargement of the PIP joints of the hands. And again, both of these are going to be signs of bony enlargement and osteophyte development. And osteophytes are these little bony projections off of the joint due to degeneration of the joint. So again, here is Heberden's nodes. Heberden's nodes are the DIP joints that are affected. So in a bony enlargement of the DIP joint and Bouchard's nodes are the PIP joints being affected. Now there are a couple of ways to remember the name of the joint finding in osteoarthritis. For instance, you can remember BP and HD. So we can think of blood pressure and HD high definition. So those are a way to remember that Bouchard's nodes affects the PIP joints and Heberden's nodes affects the DIP joints. Now let's talk about some other findings in osteoarthritis. So because of the changes to the joint, the joint becomes enlarged and there is some deterioration of the joint, there can be decreased range of motion. So a patient may have a difficult time flexing their particular joints. So the patient may have issues with flexing their knee and they can even have issues with locked joints as well as this condition worsens. Because of the deterioration of the joint, there can also be something known as crepitus. Crepitus is a snap 
crackle pop sound to the joint. This can occur with active movement and passive movement of the joint. So when a patient themselves flexes their joint, they can hear a cracking sound that is a finding in osteoarthritis. And if a clinician were to actually move the joint themselves, they can also oftentimes hear the cracking sound from the joint as well. So that is what that means when we talk about crepitus with active and passive movement of the joint. And then gelling can also occur. Gelling is a stiffening when you have stopped and rested for some time. So we talked about morning stiffness occurring in osteoarthritis, but gelling can also occur. Gelling, again, is the case where you've used your joint, you've rested the joint for some time, and then that joint becomes stiff again, and then it takes some time for that stiffness to be relieved. So that would be considered gelling. And then some other findings include joint deformity, joint instability, and enlargement of the affected joint. So there are joint changes. So due to the pathophysiology in osteoarthritis, there's loss of the articular cartilage, and there's some bony changes as well. And this will lead to deformity of the joint and instability of the joint. The joint is not as stable as it was before. And the joint itself, you can see the joints becoming enlarged. And we showed some examples when we talked about Heberden's nodes and Bouchard's nodes. Because of the bony changes, there can be some impingement on particular nerves leading to neuropathic pain. So there can be paresthesias that can occur and there can be some pain that can occur as well. So that can also be something that can be found in osteoarthritis. And then because the patient may refrain from utilizing that particular area of their body due to issues with the joint, there can be atrophy of muscles. So this can also be another finding in osteoarthritis as well. Now let's briefly talk about the stages of disease of osteoarthritis to complete our lesson on the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis. So there is early osteoarthritis, which would involve joint pain that occurs with particular physical activities. And this leads to a predictable pattern of pain that's triggered by particular movements. So this means that there is no pain in the affected joint until you do a particular physical activity with that joint. And once that activity has been completed, the pain goes away. So the pain becomes very predictable, and that would be considered early osteoarthritis. Then there can be mid or moderate osteoarthritis, where along with the symptoms from early osteoarthritis, pain also occurs sporadically in the joint. In this stage of the disease, the joint itself can also start to lock up. And then over time, the pain becomes more and more frequent. That sporadic pain becomes more and more frequent. And then eventually, there can be issues with daily functioning due to that sporadic pain that continues to occur. So there is pain that is elicited with particular physical activities, and then there's this sporadic pain of the joint, and the joint locks up, and it will become worse and worse over time. And then there is late or advanced osteoarthritis where the pain becomes constant. So there is constant joint pain. And it's oftentimes going to be a dull ache. So each stage builds on the previous stage and eventually there can be constant pain in the joint. So this is a brief overview of the stages of osteoarthritis. If you want more information on how osteoarthritis is diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.